Hey everybody, welcome back to Building Your Empire with Sophie Zoe. I'm so excited for yet another guest in my season of guests this year. And it is someone who I have been following and admiring on social media uh, for many, many years um, as I've grown my business from the ground up more than once. And so I'm very excited to have her on my show. Her name is Melanie Benson. And who wants to know how to achieve greater results without adding more work or hours? Imagine being able to spend more time doing the things you love and do it in a way that is wildly profitable. Let me introduce Melanie Benson. Melanie is host of Amplify Your Success podcast and has a gift for guiding entrepreneurs building a business around their expertise to become highly paid authorities. With over 20 years mentoring high achieving game changers, Melanie is an authority amplifier and revenue strategist, identifying high payoff profit boosting opportunities while dissolving mindset blocks that commonly derail progress. Melanie is a lifestyle enthusiast and spends her free time in search of the best spas and beaches in the world. It's a woman after my own heart. We are excited to have Melanie with us today. Everyone, please give me a loud and thunderous applause. We'll pretend we hear you on the podcast. Uh, for the woman who is going to accelerate your success today. Melanie, I'm so excited to have you on the show today. And what you do is so, so fitting for my podcast and for my listeners. I am on a mission to help people scale their business from six to seven figures and beyond with not only my expertise, but with people like you. So welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Ah, thank you for having me. What a what a heartwarming introduction. I feel so honored. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, let's dive in, Melanie. So the the ultimate question I ask everybody, what is your best tip, trick, or advice for helping business owners and entrepreneurs scale their business from six to seven figures and beyond? Mm -hmm. Well, my answer might surprise you based on how you introduce me and what you know of me. Uh, but I, my best advice is decide. Decide that you will be the person who can create a business or take a business to that next level. And then that drives strategy. See, what happens, I think a lot of times is people, they kind of chase all these different things. I was listening to some of your episodes and, you know, so they get into bright, shiny object syndrome. They um, start doing things that other people are doing, but what really has is missing is they haven't decided that they're going to have a multiple seven figure business. So what happens is we try to grow our business using the strategies that got us where we are right now. And it keeps us stuck. And we actually, the things we're doing, it's like we end up chasing too many different ideas and too many different strategies and nothing works. Uh, I build on three pillars, uh, visibility, leverage, and consistency. And in my experience, I, this is my 21st, oh, I'm getting ready to go into my 22nd year of business, but this is the tail end of my 21st year of business. And what I have noticed is if we don't have a decision then we won't, we oftentimes don't believe that we can do it. And so we do a lot of things that don't work and are frustrated because we're not getting to the results. So my uh, back door entrance into this is you've got to decide, you've got to decide you want it. And then the right strategies tend to emerge for you instead of like, all right, I want to make more money. And you chase a whole bunch of different things that may or may not work for you because they're not aligned. I love that. And that is, that speaks to, you know, like mindset and, and knowing what you want and, and being willing to go after it because, you know, some people say they want a million dollars, they want, you know, eight figures, whatever it is, but you know, they have, there, there's a difference between wanting it and deciding that that's really what you're going to, that's what you want. And you're going to actually do what it takes to get there. So I love that. Yeah. So when it comes to that decision, I, people are going to say, oh, yeah, so I decide stuff every day. You know, I decide to do this. I decide to do that. What What is the difference between, you know, making basic everyday decisions and the decision it takes to actually scale your business from that six to seven figures and beyond? Well, I talk about this a lot on my podcast. I have done several episodes on this, but I think really what we get is confused between commitment and interest. So when we decide and we're all in on something, we are committed. And then we do what it takes. 
what happens is a lot of times people are interested in something and they decide to pursue it out of a place of interest. But as soon as something gets uncomfortable or scary, like making an investment in a high-end coach or making an investment in hiring the right people for their team or making an investment in being highly visible, uh, all the things that we might talk about today, then they pull back and there's hesitancy and there's fear and a limiting belief starts to drive the decision making. And I find that if I'm going to take a client on uh, or enroll somebody in my Amplify programs, uh, I want to know they're committed to being a highly paid authority and making good money, teaching people what they're driven to teach like these. We all have something inside of us that says, I want to grow, or I want to share this, or I want to make a greater impact, or I've got all this expertise and I want to leverage it and monetize it. And once we do that, then we tend to, um, once we make that decision, then we tend to make the right decision. So I'll go back to visibility for a second. I know a lot of people that say, all right, Melanie, this is the year I'm going to break seven figures. Or let's say they're even still trying to get to half a million, right? They're trying to just, you know, get to that consistent high six-figure six revenue. And they tell me that. And then I audit their business. I do something called an Amplify audit. And I audit their business uh, growth factors. And I'm like, well, I, I don't see them on any podcasts. I don't see a consistent message. I don't see a signature offering, let alone a high ticket offer that can actually drive results. I see no leveraged revenue strategies. So, and I start to unpack that with them. And what I realize is, is they haven't really decided. They're just trying a lot of different things to see if something will work, which is kind of back in that interest camp. So I believe, and in my experience, there are seven key steps that help somebody uh, break into those higher six and seven figure revenue uh, levels. And one of them is to really know who you are and what problem you solve. And that goes again, back to decision. What I, again, I, going back to this bright, shiny object syndrome, Sophie, how many high ticket, uh, really successful entrepreneurs do you know that try to do everything for everybody? It doesn't work, Right. It's like right. we have to pick a lane. We have to decide we're going to have a specialty or a key area that we're going to focus on. Doesn't mean you only have to do one thing, but it means we have to really know what is the key problem I solve? Where's my superpower? And what is that superpower going to, um, how am I going to like build a bridge between my superpower and the the yearning and the the searching and the craving that my ideal clients have out there that say that cause them to go looking for you and what you do. So I think that that has to be a key piece of the puzzle. If you want to be able to create higher levels of revenue, you've got to have something that positions you as the authority that helps people like see you in, like I call it like the see you everywhere syndrome. Like people are like, I see you everywhere. I got to figure out what this person does because Every time I turn around, they're on a podcast or on a stage or on a magazine cover. Absolutely. I love that. Yes. And I love the fact that you talked about investment mm -hmm. because so many people see hiring a coach, hiring a team, getting the right tech, whatever it is as an expense, not an investment. And they, that, 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 that's a mindset shift that they have to make at which takes us to decision. They have to decide that it's an investment. It's not an expense. It's not money out of their pocket that they don't know if it's going to pay off. And, you know, what, you know, if they're continually doing different things, they are incurring expenses that aren't getting them anywhere because yeah. they aren't doing that focus. They, they aren't investing in themselves and their business. So I really like that you brought that up because so many people just, they, they see the expense, especially when they're at that mid six figure level because they're really looking at the numbers because by now they've learned oh you got to look at your numbers you can't make any decisions without looking at your numbers but if they don't really know how to look at their numbers and see how the difference between an expense and investment they're going to kind of stay stuck in that zone and keep trying things that are probably cheaper so because i can try more cheaper things than i can by investing in a hand coach a team of people to support me those things so i really like that uh, that aspect that you brought into that. Do you have any tips on how to help my listeners differentiate that? How can mm -hmm. they really truly see 
what they're doing when it comes to hiring a coach or making that decision to do X thing, how it's an investment and not an expense and that they've got to have that faith in that investment side of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, um, this is a really powerful conversation, especially as we're, we're starting a new year. Um, we're going to be looking at growth and what's going to move the needle this year. And I think what happens is people get confused when fear of making a mistake kicks in. And I, I, I've done this. I, I, I get this one. Like I'm human, you're human. Uh, as you're listening in, I know you're human and um, human beings want to avoid mistakes, right? Like it doesn't feel good to feel like you've made a mistake. But what happens is people, like you said, they're measuring the wrong numbers. They're looking at the wrong data. And it's very easy to get like our logic brain involved in making growth decisions. And the logic brain's always going to have a reason why we shouldn't take a risk. But um, successful businesses are not built on sure things. They're built on taking risks. They're built on playing outside the comfort zone. Uh, they're built on differentiating ourselves from everyone else. And so oftentimes we have to take a leap of faith by, and I try, there are three criteria. Am I willing to invest the amount of money in the potential of what could happen assuming I do everything that this person teaches me to do and will move me forward? Are you willing to move in the right direction, even if you don't hit the exact goal? And three, um, is it an amount of money that if I, if it doesn't work out the way I hope it will, that I'm willing to part with, with learning under my belt, right? And I think we forget, like I had a client one time, this was many years ago, he was a six figure earner and he came to me because he was overwhelmed. He was exhausted. He had kind of hit his plateau at 200,000 a year. And he's like, Melanie, like, I really want to get into the seven figures. And I'm like, cool, I can show you how to do that. But you, I'm, you're going to have a lot of things to put into action. Are you willing to do that? Yes. Well, life happened. A few things came up. He wasn't planning on like he got engaged and was planning a wedding and, you know, something else had happened that was a little bit of a derailleur. And so, you know, 10 months in, he's like, this isn't happening. And I'm like, you have the strategies. I have given you everything you need. It's your job to implement. Sure enough, he finished this life, uh, you know, derailment that happened, got married, you know, got back on track. He reached out to me about, about 19 months later. And he said, Melanie, I have more than quadrupled my investment. Like I've, I'm like, on track to break seven figures and beyond, but he needed to implement. And I think this is what people get a little messed up in their heads is they're looking at, is this dollar going to return a dollar to me tomorrow? Instead of, am I learning how to do the things that I am going to use for the rest of my life? So this investment is not just going to pay off today, tomorrow, next week, next month, and this year, it's going to pay off for years to come. That's, those are good investments. Gotcha. And yet, yeah, and that makes absolute sense because it is even in today's online world, instant gratification on things you do are, is not a thing in most cases. I mean, it's just like someone wants to get on, I'm, well, I'm going to get on social media and I'm going to post every day and I'm going to have $10,000 in client revenue by, you know, next week. It's like, no, no, there is a, there's processes and there's time and, you know, there's so much involved in it. And if it's, you know, the right investment and it is an investment and you do the work, cause that is so key. I know so many people are like, yeah, I paid a million dollars for this program and I didn't get anything out of it. I paid 500 that it's like, well, did you do the work of what they taught you? Well, yeah, I did some of it, but when it wasn't working, I quit. Well, you it's, it's all or nothing. There's no, oh, well, I'm going to hire Melanie as my coach and she's going to teach me to do these five things, but I'm only going to do three of them and still expect my million dollar success. Yeah. yeah. So you know what, what's coming up for me? And I think this is a really important pillar of anyone who wants to break into the uh, seven figures and beyond is you have to understand what your key performance indicators are. So when I'm working with uh, clients at this level, one of the things we often do is we create a criteria set for making important decisions because it's so easy to get into the shoulds versus the um, like what really is aligned. 
And I can, you know, you can shit on yourself all day long, but if it's not aligned for you, don't do it. And so sometimes just that clarity is the most important thing I hold space for my clients because high level um, business owners and CEOs as they're emerging into these bigger businesses, they're having all kinds of decisions coming at them all day long. If we can take the fuzziness out of making a really important decision and have clear criteria, it's easier to make quick decisions and reserve that energy for other things that are coming at you that you don't have set criteria for. So here's a couple things to think about in what I call a criteria, uh, a decision-making criteria. Is it going to move me towards my goal? So if I invest in this coach or this online business manager or this marketing strategy, can it move me towards my goal? Second, um, if do is doing this going to uh, help expand the recognition of my brand? If yes, then it may not drive results, but it may drive your your um, your authority persona forward, which helps you attract more opportunity. Third. How, is this going to expand me or contract me? Because sometimes even the right things are so out of alignment and we forget to kind of check in with our own intuitive, uh, like gut instinct. And I'm a fan of like, is this going to be exciting and inspiring and, and joyful and fun or not? Like life is too short to do stuff that works that is not going to bring you joy. It doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. There might be a different way you get there. You might hire that out or outsource that, that thing if it's not going to bring you joy and you know you should do it. But these are the kinds of things as we expand in our, um, like our authority and our influence and our leadership, we have to like upgrade the criteria we make decisions with. I love that. And that is such a good point because we can get stuck in deciding, uh, you know, if you don't, if you hem and haw and think about it and think about it and, well, let's look at it from this angle and let's look at it from this angle. Oh, and let's look at it from up here. And oh, let's go ask Joe and Fred and Mary, you overload your brain with so much potential nonsense it's almost like you're trying to not decide so that you don't have to decide. You know, you just like, oh, well, I'm not going to decide on that because I can't figure it out. Yeah. You have to have, you know, for the, especially for important decisions, because if you really want to move your business forward, there are some important decisions you have to make that you can't sit there forever before you make them. If you, you know, you can miss the boat, you can't miss the train. There's not everything is a, oh, well, let's wait and see. Well, that's going to keep you right where you are. Is, oh, well, let's wait and see. No. That but is I a often, decision. That is a form of a decision, right? But often it true. doesn't get you what you want. <laughs> right. Well, you're right. That is true. It is a decision. Not doing something or not deciding on what to do or not to do is, is a decision. And that's a good distinction to make, too, because a lot of people think, oh, I'll wait and see, you know, and then I'll decide. It's like, no, you just did decide. You yeah. decided not to pursue it, at least not right now, which means, you know, whatever you do from here probably means you're not going to get what you want. And it's all because you decided to wait and see, because that is a decision. Everything, you know, almost everything you do, whether you consciously know it or not, is a decision. And a lot of people don't see that. So that is a really great point to bring up because a lot of people are like, well, I'll wait and see. Well, that is a decision too. Um, or, you know, I'll do that next month. That is a decision uh, as a postponement de decision, but it's still a decision. And that can all contribute to you either not getting what you want or taking longer to get there because you keep doing those decisions to postpone and procrastinate and all those lovely little things. So very good. This has all been so amazing. And I love what you've brought to the table. My people I know are going to love this. So Melanie, tell my people where they can find you. Let them know if there's a way to learn more and if there's any offer you have put out to my people, please, please go ahead and do that now. Oh, thank you. Um, you know, the best way is to find me at my website, MelanieBenson.com. And one of the things that we're bringing to the community this year is clarity about how to really move the needle in an exponential way. I find that there are seven steps between uh, taking your expertise and feeling like a best kept secret and being highly paid as an authority. And so I have a free download that teaches people what these seven steps are to get booked 
on podcasts and stages to get leads from those podcasts and stages and to turn them into five figure and six figure deals that I think is one of the easiest ways to move the needle right now. And so putting those seven factors or those seven components together is what's really, I think it's what's the market is going to respond to well this year. You can find that at melaniebenson.com forward slash Sophie Zoe. So just spelled out Sophie Zoe, and you will be able to uh, get that. And you also get an invitation into my Facebook group where we uh, show people how to transform their expertise into being a highly paid authority. Uh, I also find that a lot of people are just really looking to like, all right, Melanie, like how can we like hit the ground running and, you know, help me put the, all the puzzle pieces together. Best way to find me is MelanieBenson.com for it says coaching and you'll see what our different options are right now. Awesome. Thank you so much. And let me tell you people, I've been following this woman on social media for 12 years now. Yes, 12 years. And I've watched her success. I've watched her grow and change and evolve and do different things with her business. So it's, you're not going to get something that's 20 years old. You're not <laughs> going to get something that is cookie cutter because that's just not the way she rolls. So definitely go check her out at melodybenson.com and, and let us know what you think. Uh, Melanie, thank you so much for coming on the show today. I'm really excited that you're here. And to my listeners out there, thank you for listening. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and spread the word. Let everybody know um, Building Your Empire with Sophie Zoe is out there and we're here to help people grow and scale their businesses. Um, thanks again, Melanie. And I'll see my listeners next week.